Hey guys, it's a Gossi Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really, really excited because I'm gonna show you a really cool feature that came out with ARKit 4 and that is currently in beta version. So what I'm gonna show you is basically we're gonna start with two different sections. The first section is going to be me scanning the area, which is you can see playing behind the scenes. I went outside, I found some vegetation, I pull up my iPad Pro and I start scanning the area. So I'm gonna show you a real-time scanning at the beginning of this video and then also the results that you see playing. And then on the second part of the video, we're going to be focused on hardware and also software. What do you need in order for you to do the same thing? So that's what I'm gonna be showing you. If you guys have additional questions by the end of this video, please let me know. And also don't forget to subscribe because it's really gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. All right guys, so I got a couple of demos that I took by just you know going inside my house, outside, and also a tree. So I'm gonna show you, this one is I took when I was outside, I am scanning, and the leader is getting the position of the particles, also the rotation, and in fact the color, so that's why it's showing you the texture and how it looks. The default particle size of the project that I'm gonna show you as well is, it's a lot smaller than this, so I wanted to increment it because I like the look, and I like to just play around with different parameters, so, that's the vegetation. Let me show you another one that is also as big as that. So let's go into the home. This one, I made it a little bit bigger. I think this was like five times bigger than it originally is. And I'm just scanning, you know, the kitchen and the floor. And the bigger the particle, the less detail, but the, the faster that it looks. So it's because of a bigger particle size, you're gonna be able to see everything, you know, right away. And that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see how it would work. So you guys can see that there is a lot more particles also per, per basically per area. And I incremented those parameters as well in the project. So that's why some of you asked me, Dilmer, how do you do that? I just basically just changed some of the parameters. So this one is inside my house. Let's go ahead and look at another one. This one is the particle size, the default that comes with the project. I, I think it looks cool. I just didn't like that I couldn't see things right away. The particle size is a lot smaller and, and also how many particles get instantiated per area. And this is my kid playing on the computer. But you guys can see that it looks cool, but not as cool as the other one because I have, you know, the parameters on the other one were much bigger. It's probably not performant, but I just didn't really care about performance. I just wanted to see how it looked and you can see how in this case the table just takes a long time to process and look because there's less particles and it's also the particle size is smaller so that's that one and then let me show you this one right here this is also outside but Partic particle size bigger i'm just scanning you know the walls of my house and also some of the or from yard and everything yeah it just looks really cool so what I want to show you is, let's actually do a real-time demo. So I am in my office, so I want to show you how that looks. All right, guys, so I got my iPad connected, so I want to show you the results. I'm going to be scanning my room. And you're going to see that as soon as I start scanning, you can see all my hardware and a couple of hats that I have in there. I have the HoloLens. And let me just go ahead and rotate it. You guys can see the lamp. See if we can get some of that roof and also the walls. So I have a couple of frames. And I'm going to go around and it's the other light that is currently turned off. So the other cool thing that I can also do with this, there's a couple of settings. You can go low, medium, or high. So if I set it to high, it's like we get more ambient occlusion. That's kind of what it looks to me when I do that. But you can go low, you can go medium, or you can go high. You can also increment the slider. And if you increment the slider, it's going to show you the real world. And it's basically showing you that like a transparency. So if I go down, it's just not, it's just gonna show you the particles that it created. But if I go up, you can see the black areas in there now making the real world appear. So I'm gonna set it all the way down so that you guys can see the area. So that's the demos that I wanted to show you. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, let's go ahead and jump in and show you how the, and what hardware are you gonna need in order for you to do this. All right, guys, so some of the hardware that I'm using right now, it's the iPad Pro. That is the last generation, which is generation four. It was released in 2020, and it's the only one currently that has the leader scanner. So that's going to be that. The computer that I'm running this song, it's a MacBook Pro. And the these are some of the specs. This is not really required, but I needed to get macOS Big Sur 
because I, I couldn't get the application, the beta version of iOS 14 installed correctly on the other device with previous versions of macOS. So I went ahead and installed macOS Big Sur, also 11 beta. And the memory on this computer is 32 gigs, processor is 2.9 gigahertz, and I have an i9. So it's a pretty beefy computer. So let's go ahead and look at some of the software that you might need to download. I don't know if macOS is required, but I couldn't get it to work otherwise. So I'm gonna say for this video that it is required and that's why some of these windows look a little bit different because I'm running macOS Big Sur Beta. The other thing that you're also gonna need is you're gonna need to restore your iPad device, right? In my case, I have a test device. So just make sure that you're careful with this because if I didn't have a test device, I wouldn't do this because I don't really trust uh, the beta version. So in my case, this works. So I did iPad OS 14 beta and I downloaded the 12.9 iPad Pro four generation version. So once you get that downloaded and you get also macOS Big Sur beta installed, the other application that you're also gonna need is going to be Xcode 12 beta. So make sure you download that because that's where ARKit 4 is going to be available on. So once you get all the software and all the, you know, everything installed as far as the operating system, and also you restore your iPad to version 14 beta, then you're ready to go. So where do you download the application? And that's what I'm gonna be showing you next. So the application that you're gonna need is going to be available in developer.apple.com. I'm going to be putting this link in the description of this video. So all you really need to do is just download it. Once you download it, you're gonna get something like what you see here. You're gonna open it in the version of Xcode that I told you to download, which is version 12 beta. So once you open it up and you get a provisional profile set up, then you can basically build it to your device. If you don't know how to set up a provisional profile, that means that you're gonna to need to get a developer account from Apple, you'll get the developer account. Once you get it set up, you can watch one of my videos where I walk you through setting up a developer account and also provisioning profile so you can actually build to your device, which is basically going to allow you to push to your device. You can't just run what we what I sh what I show you at the beginning of the video on a simulator because it's not gonna work. You need the hardware that I told you, which is the iPad Pro version, you know, the fourth generation version. So some of the things that are available in this project is going to be you know, all the implementation for the point cloud. I am not 100% sure of how everything works in here. All I know is that they're using metal and they're also using the point cloud, the feature points that are available as part of ARKit 4. I didn't write this code, so this code is from Apple. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give you a detailed explanation of how this works because it wouldn't be fair for me to do it because I don't understand it 100%. So it would actually won't be fair for you, for me to walk you through it because I don't, I don't know it really well. All I know is I changed a couple of the parameters and they make it, you know, they make the point clouds look cool. In my case, I changed the particle size. So this is what I was telling you at the beginning of the video. You can play with the particle size. You can play with the number of grid points. And you can also play with how many max points you're setting up on your, on your basically on this render so that when you're running this on your iPad Pro, there are more particles generated. This is probably no better performance and I haven't really, you know, I haven't really run a profiler against it, but I know that by using some of these, it just made it look cool. So I'm just telling you that so that you know what to expect. If you wanna go and look at this code and see how it works, you know, this code is completely available from the Apple portal that I show you and you guys can download it and change it if you like. All right, guys, that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. And also be sure to check out my Patreon page where I'm basically posting early access source code on things that I'm actually teaching, such as Unity subjects and also some of the programming subjects that I teach in the channel. Thank you, guys.